So what do you say we all get together and give a big warm welcome to the man who discovered the South, Bill Harris, again! <laughs> tell you what it means for me to come out all by myself. You're all laughing and you're applauding and you're glad to see me and I just want to tell you I love you for it because I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Benny for 16 years and ain't nobody connected with that. <laughs> Such a wonderful audience. <laughs> You're a good group to mind. I, uh, I just want you to know that I see all the servicemen sitting here, and it's awfully nice to have you. And I want you to know that uh, anytime I have servicemen in my audience, I'm very thankful because they're a good audience, and it's a pleasure for me to try and entertain them. And especially, I got to go with you guys back. Because during this, uh, I love the sailors, because during the last war, I was in the Navy myself. That's right. You can... <laughs> because I fought the battle of Has 
hadn't been playing saxophone for long, he was the representative for Manischewitz out here. <laughs> you have some fellas that I want you to meet, a couple of them. I think you'll enjoy meeting them. One of them has his own program tonight, but he still comes over, and he does this for me because he loves me. No need the money, he just likes to be around me. The one and only Albino Ray. <laughs> up the back row is a guy that's been a friend of mine for, well, a few years. We played together. We played together in the same bands. We ran all over the country together. We've been friends since that time. He's gone out into the world, and he has become a tradition, ladies and gentlemen, in his phase of the musical business. And as much as records that he made not too many years ago become collector's items, and the records that he'll make, that he is still making, will wind up to be some of the greatest that has ever been done in the Dixieland field. The one and only Red Nichols of Red Nichols for five seconds. <laughs> now I'd like for you to meet your cast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to introduce you now to uh, a, a girl. I'm not going to go into a big eulogy about it. I'm just going to tell you we've been married for 12 years. We have one daughter, nine, one, 11. She's not only the most beautiful gal in the world, but this kid's got talent, too. <laughs> Alice Faye! <laughs> When I get home, I get the counter money. So. <laughs> Here's a fellow that's been with us, ladies and gentlemen, steals our show every week, and we're very happy about it because we not only love him, but he is talented and deserves it. He plays the part of the grocery boy, Julius Abruzio, Walter Tetley, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> as ornery as he looks, too. I mean, that's in private life. Now, we have a fellow that this is his first time on our show, ladies and gentlemen. I've been trying to get him on the show ever since Alice and I have been on it for seven years, but this guy has always been too important on other shows. He's coming on our show tonight to do a character I don't think you've ever heard before, but one that he used to entertain me with many, many years ago. We two have been friends a long time. Here's one of the cleverest guys in the business, and it's a pleasure to welcome him on our show. And when he comes in to do the spot, really make me be happy because I want him back again. You remember him as the old-timer and as the boomer and all of the important parts on the Fibber McGee program. This is Bill Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen. They were over on the Benny program with me ever since I can remember. They were responsible for all the cute commercials. They're now a big act in their own right. And when you see them on the marquee appearing around in the country, go see them. You'll be royally entertained. The Sportsman Quartet. <laughs> Mira Mira on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? I was only asking. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James and Jack Douglas, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight we bring you a rare little treat titled A Trip to the Moon, or I Must Have Taken the Wrong Turn at Pomona. <laughs> Stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. <laughs> There's one thing you can say about Phil Harris. Actually, there are a lot of things you could say, but this is radio. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> there's one thing you can say about Phil Harris. When Phil heads down the stairs in the direction of his breakfast, he's a happy little character. Well, anyway, he's a character. <laughs> There's a mansion in Encino and that is owned by Alice Faye. But the poor girl's broken-hearted because I belong to RCA. <laughs> oh, beloved, let me love you. Oh, hi, honey. Breakfast almost ready? The Manlius School for Girls, Mills College, Wellesley, Vassar. Honey, I'm here. React. Whee! <laughs> Mount St. Joseph's, Smith, Holyoke. Hey, Alice, remember me? I live upstairs, remember? <laughs> now, look, Phil, this is very important. So is my breakfast. I know eating is a bother, but I've gotten a habit, honey, and I can't bust it. You have to wait. I've got to pick a school for Alice. She goes to school. Honey, I mean a finishing school after she graduates. Oh, oh. when's that going to be? In three years. Well, I didn't know it was an emergency. <laughs> Let's drop everything. You pick the school and I'll run outside and stop the bus. That's the... <laughs> Alice, Bill, it isn't funny. Every one of these schools has a waiting list eight blocks long. All right, wait a minute, Myrna. Just one second. <laughs> now, what about that application I signed two weeks ago? Wasn't that for a school? Yes. Miss Philpott's Foundation for Young Females. Oh, the most exclusive school in the entire country. That's right. So what happened? Our application was turned down. They won't take Alice because her father is an actor. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's what I told them. <laughs> but they insist you're an actor. Now, look, honey, I'm not going to sit here and be... I'll get that. It's the door. How do you like that? They don't like actors. Some of my best friends are actors. Maxie Rosenblum, <laughs> B.S. Pulley, Charlie Foy. <laughs> they don't like actors. Hi, Curly. Oh, hello, Elliot. Come on in. Breakfast ready? The way I see it, there ain't gonna be no breakfast. Alice finally ran out of money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We got problems. They won't let little Alice into Miss Philpott's foundation. Well, it would be a little crowded. That's a school, Clyde. A finishing school. You know, sort of like college or something, and they won't let little Alice in on account of me. What'd you do now? Nothing. They don't like actors. Well, what's that got to do with you? <laughs> Alice already did that joke. She did, huh? Find how she got here. 30 rooms, no straight man. Look, Elliot, will you be serious for just a minute? This is a big problem. This is a big thing in my life. Now, what am I going to do? About what, girl? About my kids. They won't let them into none of them swanky schools just because I'm a actor. An actor, girl. An actor. Okay. An actor. Better. But an good actor. <laughs> Curly, what's so important about your kids going to a swanky school? So they go to a non-swanky school like everybody else. Elliot, if little Alice went to Miss Phil Potts or Vassar or one of them places, she'd meet only the best. Don't you understand? She'd get invited to West Point, Annapolis, and all them places for proms and dances. And, well, that's, that's important stuff to a girl. Curly, I got news for you. You better keep your kids out of places like that. Keep them out? What's the matter? You crazy or something? No, I ain't crazy. Look, you put little Alice in that Philpott Thames Foundation, and what happens? She starts comparing notes with the other kids. Okay, so she compares notes. What's the matter with that? What's the matter? Don't you see, Curly? She goes out with all them kids from Annapolis and West Point, and their fathers are all generals and admirals, and what are you? A skin beater with the Dixieland doozy. <laughs> was 26 years ago. Well, couldn't she say I was a singer? Could anybody? <laughs> to them, you're still pounding cymbals. You got no background, no culture. Well, I'll get it, Curly. 
That takes time. Well, Alice, don't graduate for three years. I'll get it. Look, these kids' fathers are famous men. Doctors, scientists, explorers. Hey, wait a minute, Elliot. You just said it. I got it. What? Explorers. That's what I'd like to be. A famous explorer who goes out and discovers something. Boy, that'd make them admirals sit up. Oh, Elliot, just think of it. Little Alice Harris, daughter of the famous explorer and mountain climber, Sir Philip Harris. <laughs> Queen of the Annapolis Prom. Yeah. Curling? How'd you get to be queen of the Annapolis Prom? <laughs> little Alice, Elliot. Little Alice. Oh, 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 oh. oh. For a second, you have me worried. <laughs> Anybody home? I brought the groceries. Oh, yeah. Just put them on the table, Julius. Elliot, now mm-hmm. there's only one other thing. An explorer. You see that? We hit it right now. Look, there's only one thing we've got to do. What's that? Now that I'm a great explorer, what do I discover? How about, uh, Abyssinia? Ellie, are you nuts or something? How am I going to discover Abyssinia? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> well, how about... No. Columbus already discovered Australia. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> hey, I could just... Dis- no. You know, something that's awful. Every place I think of, somebody's already discovered. There ought to be some place. Fargo, North Dakota... Charleston, South Carolina Liberace, West Africa (laughs) That's Liberia, Curly What's the difference? They've both been discovered Look, if we could only figure how those other guys operated You know, like Magellan and Balboa Lewis and Clark Pico and Sepulveda (laughs) All right, Julius, go away, will you? Go on, kid, beat it before you get clobbered Please, Mr. Harris, you ain't gonna send me away now, are you? This is the moment I've been waiting for practically my whole life. What are you talking about? I couldn't help over here in the conversation. Leave me stay here, please, so I can watch the end of your complete mental collapse. <laughs> it is on the brink. Yes, it's flipping. <laughs> what is? <laughs> For your information, Mr. Harris and I are engaged in a discussion of a highly technical nature. Yeah, and that cap you're wearing ought to be on Lloyd Hamilton. (laughs) Right, Elliot? By all means, Sir Philip. They're getting closer. (laughs) Curly, you got to discover something big, something you can stick your name on, like... like the Harris Ocean. Closer. Or the Saharas Desert. Closer. Or the Harrisippi River. Bingo! <laughs> Look, Julius, w- would you be a good kid and get lost? Hey, wait a minute. There's an idea. He gets lost and I discover him. Curly, let's not be ridiculous. Things like Julius wash up on the beach every morning. <laughs> Causes the tides. The moon. Elliot, they already discovered the moon. Curly, you're going to sign up for a trip to the moon. I am? Oh, Elliot, that's hard to do, ain't it? Not for you. You got connections. Yeah? <laughs> you got influential friends. You mean they can fix it for you? If you sure. Got... Well, then let's go see them. Let's get to operate. Curly, huh? you'll be a sensation. Yeah. You'll be the biggest thing on the moon since Vaughn Monroe. Well, reach <laughs> sight. Two big, strong idiots reduced to blubbering idiots. <laughs> Gee, poor Miss Faye. Oh, hello, Julius. I thought I heard you. Miss Faye! Beautiful Miss Faye! At last I am free to speak of the love that is in my heart. <laughs> He's better not, Julius. Mr. Harris won't like it. Oh, we won't have to worry about him. He's gone to the moon. Well, that's nice. As long as he gets back in time for dinner. He ain't kidding, Miss Faye. He really thinks he's going. Oh, don't be silly, Julius. I can't even get him to go to Glendale. <laughs> yeah. But maybe if somebody... <laughs> w- w- what happened, Julius? <laughs> I just got the most beautiful idea. Even for me. 
Julius? I, I don't like that glint in your eye. Don't worry, Miss Faye. We'll teach that character or yours a lesson. But, but Julia, aren't you going to tell me? <laughs> what do you see to pay off? It'll kill you. I'll be seeing you, Miss Faye. <sighs> I wonder what Julius is going to do to Phil. Well, it can't be anything bad. He had such a silly little grin on his face. Well, back to the dishes. <laughs> This moment on, you for me, dear, only two for tea, dear, from this moment on, from this happy day, no more blue song, only whoop de doo song, from this moment on. For oh, you've got the love I need so much Got the skin I love to touch Got the arms to hold me tight Got the sweet lips to kiss me goodnight From this moment on From this moment on You and I, babe We'll be riding high, babe Every care is gone from this moment on You've got the love he needs so much Got the skin he loved to touch Got the arms to hold you tight Got the sweet lips to kiss you goodnight From this moment on Curly, what do you mean they called you last night? Last night, that's what I'm talking about. They called me on the phone. The rocket people invited me to go to the moon. You mean on the level? Whatever way they go. <laughs> All I know is, hell, old boy, I'm signed up. I'm a member. Are you sure this ain't a rib? Elliot, I was down there this morning. I met the commander, and I met his assistant. He's a cute little guy, always laughing and smiling. You mean they're really going? When? I don't know. They never let you know them things, but they told me to be ready at any time. You see, I'm a very important member of the crew. I got this lever that I have to pull. And if I, you know, when I get ready to, if I, well, if I don't pull it, well, you can imagine how important it is. Curly, there's one thing I don't understand. Why'd they pick you? I don't know. Unless they wanted one of every kind. <laughs> sort of like a half-mast Noah's Ark, huh? <laughs> yeah, only, only this ain't no ark, you see. You never saw such equipment. Hey, Elliot, they got them rocket guns, them space guns, and they've got... Hey, look, I've even got my own uniform. No kidding, Elliot. This is a big operation. Look, you get a pressurized space helmet, pressurized space suit, pressurized BVDs. <laughs> yeah, man, with a pressurized escape hatch. <laughs> oh, this thing really rolls. I, 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 I can hardly believe it, Curly. You going to the moon. Look, I told the commander, I said, hey, Kami, I said, I want to make a good impression when I get to that moon. Naturally. And then, you know, I figured, you know, I told him I wanted to look good when I got up there. And I got these, you know, I got them cashmere sweaters with my initials laid on them up there, you know. <laughs> you know, I thought that'd kind of be nice for the trip with the alligator shoes and everything. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm selling it. But the commander, you know, he explained to me that when we get to the stratosphere, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of cold. And then he told me that after you get up through to the substratosphere into the chrome... Stratosphere. What's the matter, Curly? Stratosphere. Is that off the ground? <laughs> oh, sure. Much? Three or four hundred miles. Three or four hundred. My, right. 
Miles? Right. Oh, let's sit down. Right. Elliot, what am I going to do? About what, Curly? I can't go to no moon. I forgot it was off the ground. <laughs> Curly. Now, wait a minute, Elliot. You know how scared I am of high places. I get nervous looking at a giraffe. So you don't... So you don't take any giraffes along. But, Elliot, I can't even get up on a step ladder. I get dizzy if they put extra soles on my shoe. <laughs> Curly, it's going to be a breeze. Like falling off a log. Sure, sure. But if I fall off a log in the stratosphere, that's quite a drop, Homer. <laughs> Why do you do things like this to me? Me? Why do you let me get into these things? I wasn't even here. Sure, my friend. Whenever I need you, where are you? I'll be floating around thousands of miles in the air, and where will you be? In a nice, warm pool room. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, let's not get hysterical. Let's approach this problem scientifically. I'll never make it, Elliot. I'm never going to get used to high places. Don't you understand? I even get dizzy when I'm wearing thick socks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've heard of that. It's called argylophobia. <laughs> Don't say it again, but whatever you call it, I got it. That's all I Yeah, want. but look, one th you haven't met my friend yet. I don't want a meter. I've met some of your friends. Remember, it was part of the cure. <laughs> Curl. This friend isn't of the stronger sex. This is a man. <laughs> a man of science, a very famous German professor, Professor Hugo von Straussmann. He's your friend? Sure. And he's an expert on rockets and spaceships and guided missiles. Not only that, during the war, he taught hundreds of men how to fly through space without fear. You mean he was with the German army? An enemy? Well, yes, but in an advisory capacity only. Right now, he's the travel... Space travel expert at UCLA. And if anybody can remove your fear of high places, it's the professor. Now, do you want him to help you or not? Well, sure. Okay, then come on, let's go. Well, I'll be right with you. I just want to put on a thinner pair of socks before my nose starts to bleed. I can... <laughs> Now, while we're waiting for him to come to the door, do you think it's all right just dropping in on Professor von Straussmann like this? Maybe we should have called him first. Relax, Curly. All great men are very friendly. I just hope he's home. So... Ah, wie geht's, meine Herren? Welcome to Hot and Pepper Heaven. Jawohl, auch der lieber Augustine and all that sort of leader clan. Want to step inside? Come and sit and see in the living room. That must be the play. <laughs> hey, Professor, you remember me, Elliot Lewis? Sure, I remember you. I never forget a schmutzen. <laughs> That's face in German. I certainly hope so. <laughs> step this way, gentlemen, but be careful. Don't step on the cat's tail. I don't see no cat. Oh, we don't have a cat, just his tail. <laughs> That's an old German folk joke. <laughs> hey, Ellie, are you sure Curly, this next. Guy... Wait, wait. Uh, Professor von Straussmann, uh, my friend Mr. Harris here is very interested in space travel and rocket ships. Well, ship my schnapps. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Uh, well, you see, Professor... Uh, uh, what my friend is trying to tell you, I'm terribly afraid of, of, of high places. Ah, to leave it, that's natural, my boy. One of my colleagues, Dr. Kleinschmidt, he was afraid of high places until we sent him up in the X-69 V-283. You sent him up in the... You mean to tell me you sent him up in the X-69 V-283? Yeah, the first rocket ship. My, oh, my, what a beautiful zoom it made. <laughs> <laughs> and now Dr. Kleinschmidt isn't afraid of high places anymore? Uh, we don't know. That was 27 years ago. <laughs> When he comes down. <laughs> you know, Professor, 
I could listen to this scientific talk all night. So could I. Reminds me of the great German scientist Albert Einstein and what he said about science. He said, Stuhlfreuden, Blütenfliegen, Fragauden, Stolzen, Fliegenblut und Fliegenblüten, Fliegen, Unfruit. He also had something very interesting to say about women. What? It loses too much in the translation. <laughs> Hey, Professor, do you really think you could help Curly here? Oh, yeah, wohl, yeah, wohl. I've been helping the fledgling space flyers since I was knee-high to a hop grasser. <laughs> Professor, uh, that's a uh, grasshopper. <laughs> you American? <laughs> uh, Professor von Strassman, uh, Curly is going to take a trip to the moon. Ach, du Himmelstraße, a trip to the moon. Oh, you love it up there, boy. What a magnificent view. No oxygen, but a magnificent view. <laughs> Professor, I keep telling you, I, I can't stand... I'm, I'm afraid of high places. Curly, look, you got nothing to worry about. Professor von Straussmann is world famous as a space traveler. He's the greatest. All his life he's traveled in space. Just by looking at him, you can tell that. <laughs> yeah, I've been noticing. His feet don't even touch the ground. <laughs> Professor, how am I going to go all the way to the moon if I'm afraid of the height? The answer to that is so simple. Conditioning. We start you off slow and gradually we increase the height and pretty soon it don't bother you. Hey, that's a great idea. Uh, gee, that sounds wonderful, Professor. What's the first thing we do? Well, uh, how do you look in high heel shoes? <laughs> he looks great, but it makes Alice look awfully short. All right. Wait a minute. What kind of conditioning is that? Stay out of this, Elliot, a minute. Now, look, uh, Professor, uh, how about this? The commander, you see, this is, this is a very big thing for me. The, I mean, the, the commander and his whole group and my two lovely daughters, well, they're dependent on me. Now, now help me. How are you going to teach me not to be scared? Oh, of just... course, mine boy. Here, you come over here and sit on the windowsill. Well, wait a minute, Professor. We're about a story and a half high here. I don't know whether I got the courage to... Fine, boy. We got the courage right here in this little box. Brave pills. <laughs> brave pills? Sounds like fun. You mind if I try a handful, Professor? Ah, you're too brave now, my boy. <laughs> here, Mr. Harris, take this pill. It will give you the utmost courage. Well, I... Go on, Curly. Surprise your stomach with something dry for a change. <laughs> okay. <sighs> there. Fine. Now just zip on the window, Zill. Okay, but... That's right. Now dangle your legs. Lean out a little. Test your courage. All right, but... Hey, hey, I'm scared. Hey, Hey, Elliot, I'm slipping. Oh! You know something? They don't make brave pills like they used to. <laughs> Phil, you haven't the faintest idea when you're going to leave. Why do you have to pack? Alice, I have to back. The first rule for a lever puller is on a rocket ship is preparedness. You've got to be prepared. Now, I'll be packed. You got everything you need, Curly? I think so. Socks, shoes, handkerchief, hair nets, bobby pins, space gun, <laughs> space helmet. How about some space money in case you run into a space doll? Elliot! Well, let's face it, Alice. There's Venus, Minerva, or Marilyn Monroe. Oh! <laughs> Sure, they'll be here tonight. Honey, I just got a feeling. Call it anything you want. Superstition or intuition. And anyway, they told me that they'd be here tonight. Oh, all I know, I haven't seen one thing in the paper about naturally, it. Naturally, honey, naturally. This is all hush hush. This is top draw. This they is know. your life. <laughs> and speaking of lives, Curly, if anything happens, don't you worry about Alice. I'll look after everything. Hold it a minute, Clyde. Hold it. <laughs> Let's not look so cheerful about it. Cheerful? Was I looking cheerful? Now, wait a minute. Look, Alice. I want you to remember one thing. If I don't come back for a while, I mean... Well, if I don't... 
Don't you start running around, see? Why, Phil, I won't set foot out of the house for 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> wait a minute. Give me a chance to get back. You don't have to wait long. Just, well, give me eight or nine years, that's all. <laughs> Curly, be reasonable. I'm being reasonable. What if we're floating around up there in the stratosphere and I'm pulling them levers and stuff and we blow a gasket? <laughs> no, they don't have many gasket stations up there. <laughs> Take me a while to... Phil, wouldn't you like to call the whole thing off? I can't, Alice. The children of America are dependent on me. Well, how about your own children? They're dependents. My little deductions. <laughs> I may never see them again. Well, come on, Curly. Let's finish packing. Elliot, why are you so anxious for me to pack? I'm being helpful. Well, stop being helpful and stop trying on my cashmere sweater. <laughs> can I even feel them? I never saw anybody so anxious. Hey, Curly, listen. What? Listen. Phil, Phil, what is it? Well, whatever it is, it's it, it's right out in front. Hey, you don't suppose they brought the rocket here, do you? It's very possible. After all, I'm a big man on this expedition. <laughs> you know, it ain't every day that you can find a good cheap lever puller. Phil, don't go. <laughs> Please. Don't go. Please, Phil. <laughs> Alice, make up your mind. Laugh or cry. <laughs> You're putting Catherine Hepburn out of business. <laughs> you can't do both, you know. Look, Phil, this whole thing is very silly. Why don't you call the whole thing off? I can't. I gave my word. Oh, but they probably didn't believe you. They know how you lie. Ow! <laughs> Time to shove off, sir. Goodbye, Alice. I'll think of you always. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye, Elliot. Don't try any more three-horse parlays. <laughs> Goodbye, old man. It's been fun. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Hiya, Mr. Harris. Julius, what are you doing here? I want you should meet a couple of friends of mine. Come on in, fellas. Okay, Commander. Hello, Phil. Hi, everybody. Folks, meet Commander Corey and Cadet Happy of Space Patrol. Hey, Curly, are these the guys you were telling me about? Naturally. It's my commander and his assistant. Oh, Julius, you're so cute. I think you're cute, too. Wait a minute, Commander. I want to get one thing straight. You're not taking Julius, are you? Well, as far as the station... Then I ain't going. Oh, smoking rockets, Mr. Harris, you gotta go. If Julius is going, you can include me out. There ain't no rocket ship big enough for the both of us. Oh, let him go, Curly. You can dump him around Sagittarius. <laughs> I ain't dumping him nowhere. If he's going, I'm staying. But he's gotta go, Phil. We're using his truck. To go to the moon? Smoking rockets, Commander. I think he's got Encino space fever. Who said anything about the moon? You did. You even knew my middle name, Wonga. Oh, he didn't say Wonga, Mr. Harris. He said Tonga. She's a girl scientist on the show. Show? What show? The show you're going to be on. Space Patrol! <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Lady, are you caught in the kitchen traffic jam when you serve a big meal? Must you choose between cold biscuits and a cold roast? Well, you know, the new RCA Estate range solves your problem of getting everything at once. You can now serve everything. Meat, biscuits, vegetables, sauces, coffee, steaming hot at their peak of savory perfection. Dependable performance, easy operation. The new, the wonderful, the sensational RCA Estate gas and electric ranges. At your dealers now. Folks, this is Phil again, and I want to thank Commander Corey and Cadet Happy for zooming over on our show. What a big thrill it was, and how happy it made our audience, and I would just love for all of you people out there to be here and see these two wonderful guys. I also want to tell you that they entertain our kids every Saturday on another network, so please listen. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.
Included in this program transcribed were Bill Thompson and Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy in Space Patrol. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Network production. Middle of page five. Little Alice Harris, daughter of the famous explorer and mountain climber Sir Philip Harris, queen of the Annapolis prom. Yeah. I thought it was better to say how about it. I says, uh, uh, now, Columbus already discovered Australia. I said, yeah, yeah, he, he's got that. I think that's kind of nice to throw in. Just say, yeah, he's got that. How about if I just... No. Uh, I, bottom of page five. Yeah. Yeah, he's already got that. How about um, if I discuss... Or, you know something, Ellie? That this is awful. Every place I think of, somebody's already discovered. I can't go to the moon. I forgot it was off the ground. You know how scared I am of high places. I get nervous looking at a giraffe. I think I did that all right before. Well, see, this is a little bit I've got to... Now, wait a minute. What kind of conditioning is that? Stay out of this, will you, Elliot? Now, how about it, Professor? The commander in that... See his... Uh, what kind of conditioning is that? Uh, let me... I'm starting all over again. Now, wait a minute. What kind of conditioning is that? Stay out of this, will you, Elliot? Don't you realize, Professor, the commander... And I didn't want to say cadet. That's what's throwing. Now, wait a minute. What kind of conditioning is that? Stay out of this, Elliot. Look, Professor, listen to me. The commander and my two lovely daughters are dependent on me. Now, are you going to teach me to... to, to not to be... Uh, my... Now, wait a minute. What kind of conditioning is that? Stay out of this, Elliot. Listen to me, Professor. The commander and my two little daughters are depending on me. Now, are you going to teach me not to be scared or not? Bottom of page 19. Alice, the first rule for a lever puller on a rocket ship is preparedness. Table this for you, will you remember? Folks, this is Phil again. Letters from home are more important now than before the fighting ended in Korea. Remember, letters from home help to keep the spirit and morale of these boys high. So if you have relatives or friends in the armed services, remember to write a letter to them now and then. Thanks. Good night.